What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Hearthstone Power. Just wanted to remind you guys about the contest that I currently am running. Looking for some creative minds to put together an introduction video between 5 and 10 seconds, something like that, with a cool little uh, sound effect and a little animation featuring the Hearthstone Power logo. Probably gonna have to redesign that because it's uh, the one we have right now is uh, low pixels, so looking for any kind of uh, creative geniuses to send them my way. Again, the prize after reviewing all the submissions is going to be the World of Warcraft pet of your choice. You have the Cinder Kitten, Soul of the Aspects, Lil KT, Pandaren Monk, Lil XT, Lil Ragnaros, Moonkin Hatchling, Scenarian Hatchling, or the Guardian Cub. Excuse me if I'm talking a little bit quiet right now. I have uh, somebody sleeping in the other room, so I'm going to have to make this video just a little bit more quiet than usual so I hope you guys are cool with that because I really wanted to get some content out to you tonight so um, today we're going to be looking at the play-by-play -play commentary of the warrior versus paladin shoutcast let's get into it alright today we are analyzing the fireside duel of the paladin versus the warrior Uther and Garrosh going to be doing a slower version of the commentary I did prior. Less of a shoutcast, more of a, an analysis of the game. Going to look at some new mechanics and some play-by-play -play of uh, some strategies that I think that could have been utilized. And so we'll go turn by turn and I'll be pausing it here and there to discuss with you guys what uh, my thoughts are. So let's uh, find our opponent and we will get into the match. I'm right, going to pause it right here at the opening hand. Alright, these are all good cards. However, you definitely want to get some minions in your opening hand. Um, I mean, the fact that you don't have mana in your deck means that if you built your deck properly, every card that you're going to that you're gonna draw is going to be a good card because you put it in your deck. But you definitely want to get some minions because you will take... Um, a lot of early damage by not having any kind of minions, and you definitely want to get some uh, aggression um, pushed on the opposing hero. So, the warrior does end up dumping everything but Brawl, which I think is more of a late game card, but it's definitely a safe bet by holding on to it because you know it's going to help you in a pinch. So, hard decision, discarding three cards, but gotta do what you gotta do and sometimes you just get lucky and you might just get a Leroy all right so the paladin is playing first all right he's playing a secret the fact that he that he has many secrets in his deck makes it uh, challenging I'm gonna pause really quick the fact that he's many secrets in his deck makes it challenging to figure out a specific secret we saw prior in the uh, in the mage match we only saw the one secret utilized. So you knew if the mage played a secret, you kind of knew what it was. In this case, the paladin has at least two, maybe more. And we'll probably end up having more if he builds his deck around the secret mechanic. So it's a nice uh, peace of mind for the paladin knowing that the warrior probably doesn't know which secret he is playing. So it is a good approach to a deck if you can build uh, a deck around it. Right here we got the, uh, the new shield bearer with the enraged mechanic. The enraged mechanic basically is if you if the minion is not at full health, the enraged ability gets activated, which in this case is plus one attack. So that's nice. So he is gonna play the shield bearer on this turn. Alright, knife juggler. Now, in my opinion, I mean, you, at first glance, you, you really don't like the random effect, at least I don't. There's a lot of random effects in this game that, I mean, they're, 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 they're going to help you, but they're not always going to be able to handle the board like you would want them to. That's the problem with random effects, you know, like I mentioned earlier, and uh, with uh, arcane missiles. But in this case, it makes really good combo with the Haladin's hero power. The Paladin's, <laughs> the Paladin's hero power, which is to make a minion. He can uh, make a minion for two resources, and if he has the Knife Juggler in play, he gets to deal one random damage. So, 
a little bit more synergy there so you can appreciate that and the paladin has lots of uh, card synergies with um, minions coming into play as you'll see later in the match so knife juggler is a pretty good uh, addition to the synergy for his deck all right now the cruel taskmaster and when he does play this card and he does deal damage to his shield bearer um, if you aren't paying attention the first time around it happens kind of quick I'm gonna pause it right there. You might notice that the shield bearer has three attack. That's because of the ability from the cruel taskmaster, which gave him plus two attack, and of course his enrage ability, which was another plus one attack for a total of three. Now of course this does trigger the paladin's secret. A little bit of bad luck, considering that the knife juggler, there you go, happens to target the shield bearer and finish it off. And Garrosh is, of course, naturally upset. Garrosh angry. All right, Paladin plays Blessing of Wisdom. I like this card, but you definitely want to get at least two attacks off to generate that card advantage. It's too bad you can't <laughs> combo that with Wind Fury. That would make it very valuable. Now, Execute is the only play here, looking at the other cards and the resources that he has available to him. So, not a lot of choice here. Still a good move, though. And uses his remaining his remaining resources to play that Crazed Alchemist. Doesn't get to take advantage of his ability, but better that than nothing. Now, he does activate the Secret. However, Repentance doesn't really have a huge effect here. Um, just bringing, just doing one damage to that to that creature. No big deal. All right, and he plays the Sword of Justice. Now, this is a pretty versatile weapon. You can basically hand out plus one, plus one counters to five minions that get summoned. Um, definitely a unique play on the weapon, giving your, basically it's gonna lose all its durability to power up the minions, which is definitely good because it doesn't uh, make the Paladin vulnerable. Normally when you attack with your with your hero that has a weapon, you have a chance of taking damage from the minions that you're attacking. This way, he was able to give the power of the weapon to the minions. So, he gets to play a little bit more of a defensive role by doing that. Alright, now the Core Cron Elite is definitely the right play here. It's, uh, the board is clear, plus the creature has charge. It's very just solid reliable damage to the enemy so easy easy choice there All right, now the paladin's gonna play the the harvest golem um, any kind of death rattle ability that lets you generate other creatures is amazing card advantage I mean it's it's two cards in one I'm gonna pause it really quick uh, it's two cards in one you you need to be aware that this is great card advantage this is a card to watch for when you're playing the forge because there's going to be the common picks are going to be creature destruction type abilities any kind of board removal so anytime you can turn one creature into two is definitely beneficial um, you also you can combo the golem with the paladin sword of justice and you have great synergy the golem gets powered up from the sword it dies comes back you get another plus one plus one from that sword uh, this is a good uh, would be a good uh, chance for the knife juggler if he were in play to gain even more synergy dealing random damage out every time the minion a minion gets summoned and then next you have the secret keeper just more synergy for that deck with all the secrets that he's playing and you're starting to see a common theme here that the paladin has a lot of um, synergy in his deck he's got uh, minions being created that have battle cry abilities that are triggering things based on secrets, based on when things come into play. So this Paladin deck is built pretty well. Alright, now he does play Leroy here. Now, this is the right play. Considering that he has Brawl in his hand to play on the following turn, 
this is a great chance for him to go all out offensive and to clear the board next turn. The warrior is playing definitely playing uh, an aggressive an aggressive type deck for sure. Now I mentioned earlier the uh, two and one card advantage. Karen is another fine example of of that. Um, you know, Karen dies, summons Bane. Uh, spoiler alert, by the way. <laughs> the warrior is definitely happy that the paladin is focusing on his minions, but you know, not that the paladin has much choice considering his low health. So, all right. As I mentioned earlier, brawl is the one and only choice here. I want to point out that some people have said by giving the paladin the whelps from Leroy. It cost the warrior the game. However, one creature was guaranteed to survive, so if it wasn't the whelp, it would have been something else. Because you are, you are guaranteed one creature to be left on the board. Could be your own, in some cases, but in this case he had none. The warrior had none, so it was going to be the paladins. Alright, Illidan. I'll pause it really quick. Um, it seems the paladin has all the legendary cards in this game. Maybe the warrior's just having uh, bad draws. So... Anyway, the, the warrior's big game hunter, which uh, you can see down there, destroys a, any minion with seven or more attack. <laughs> it's the perfect card to kill Illidan with. Unfortunately, it does get discarded. It would have handled Illidan quite well. Um, it's a great play by the paladin because the paladin is only discarding two cards, whereas the warrior had to discard three. So the the if Illidan is the last card in your hand and you, you get to play him, and you don't have to discard anything, that is amazing card advantage. And that's probably why he's uh, legendary, because a 7 for 7... 7-7 seven, <laughs> seven, seven for 7 is, is good, but it's really that battle cry of, of uh, disrupting your opponent and possibly gaining card advantage that makes this card so good. Alright, now unfortunately... Getting, the war is getting hit on right now. Now he is going to have to spend two cards, well, two actions really, to take out Illidan. He's going to put that re the Arcanine Reaper in play, and he's going to, I believe, slam for two damage on Illidan. So he does have to spend all his energy there, and he's going to take seven damage in the process. It's still the right play, though, because if he decided to have taken out Bane, pause it really quick, if he decides to take out Bane, he would take four damage, and Illidan would still be there next turn to attack him. So, it's um, usually the right play to take out the bigger minion first, especially if you don't have minions on your side of the board with Taunt. Now, I know I often mention that health gain isn't great. However, when it is coupled with a solid minion like that, it has great added value. You've got a beefy creature on the board. The life gain is just bonus at that point. Good added value. Alright, now the Warriors are struggling. He doesn't really have anything in his hand to help him. And he he does use Battle Rage as a last ditch effort to draw into something. He, you know, does damage to one of the minions, does Battle Rage to draw one card. Looking for maybe another Brawl if he had another one in his deck. But uh, all he was able to draw was a giant gorilla, which was not very helpful. So, Warrior doesn't do too well this turn. And he even gives the paladin a banana, which the paladin then uses to taunt him. I mean, he uses the banana on the gorilla that gave him the banana. So I've always noticed in these games, there's always a little bit of a uh, <laughs> little bit of uh, playing around at the end. They usually do something silly. So yeah, unfortunately, the warrior doesn't have anything. He's just kind of playing with his hand. Yep. Bananas for the gorilla. Yeah, so comparing those two decks side by side, you could definitely mention, definitely want to mention the difference in card synergy between these two decks. Uh, I mean, we did not see all the cards in the Warrior deck. However, the Paladin's cards clearly work together to great effect. It doesn't mean, however, that you can't just build a solid beatdown deck like this Warrior deck. This will actually probably be the deck type that you see the most but you do need a lot of pow powerful cards and aggressive creatures in order to pull this off effectively. Alright, this has been my play-by-play -play of the Paladin vs. the Warrior match. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave feedback, subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys later. Time to hearth out.